Hi everyone, Tristan here from Montreal Music Labs, and today we're gonna to talk about getting started with VM1. VM1 is a controller application for your iPad that will allow you to see and control all of your VN Ensemble Pro 7 servers, instances, and channels. Now, VM1 is actually two applications. There is an iPad iOS app, and there is also a desktop application either for PC or Mac. In this case, we're on my PC, and I'll pull up a, vi a view of my iPad right now. And what you can see is that it says no servers found. And the reason for this is quite simple. I'm not running the helper app. So I'm gonna boot the helper app here. And now we can see that it is connected to PC1. If you look in the top right corner of the iPad, there it says connected to Tristan's PC1. And then it sees two servers. It sees my PC one and it says my MacBook Pro. So if I click on my MacBook Pro here, we can see that I've got two instances loaded there. And if I come back, I can always just swipe to go back. I can click on my PC and I can see that there are no instances loaded. So I wanna take this time to take a look at some of the overall features and what you can do with VM one. Starting with the PC one local. I already had brass and strings loaded on my Mac. So to, now I wanna maybe create something on my PC. So in the bottom left corner, there's a little plus button and I can hit that. And now I can draw, draw up some, let's say I wanna create a, a Woodwinds instance. So I'm gonna go to the name and I'm gonna just type in, uh, actually erase Woodwinds. There, it sees it already. Uh, color, I'm gonna set it to red. Um, and then I'm going to create just one instance for now. That should be fine. I want it enabled and I want the audio engine running. Okay, as is default with VN Ensemble Pro, it creates a master bus. I don't want that per se. Uh, so I'm gonna, the next button right over is a wrench. I'm going to select that, select the instance, uh, select the, the channel in this instance, edit and delete. And just like that, I've deleted the, the instance, the channel. But now I do wanna create some channels. And it so happens that my favorite woodwinds are in contact. So what I'm gonna do is I'm clicking the plus button. I can go to preset or plugin, instruments, VST, native instruments, and contact. I'm gonna rename from contact. For simplicity here, I'm gonna call it woodwinds. And as we go a little bit further down, I see MIDI channel one, and I do wanna go from channels one through 16. I'm gonna create 16 channels of contact, and I'm gonna go MIDI channel one, ascending, uh, output, I'm gonna go output one, two, ascending to output 31, 32. So again, and then the quantity, I want not one, but I want 16, done. And then I'm gonna go, I'll set a color too, you know, I'll make it sort of that same red. And I'll go add. And just like that, I've created 16 channels of contact all in the same uh, VNL Ensemble Pro 7 instance. They're all colored, numbered, and labeled accordingly. So one, two, three, four, and output one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And of course, the naming convention was woodwinds. And so it added one, two, three, four, five, and six, et cetera. Now, if we come back to the iPad, we'll see in each of the four corners of these little buttons that represent the channels, right? If we look in each corner, we're gonna see something different. So in the top left, we'll see uh, one, two on the next one, three on the one after, four, five, six. This corresponds to the channel ID, which is seen here. So one, two, three. And if we look at uh, the bottom left corner uh, of the buttons, we'll see a little keyboard. This means it's an instrument track. Uh, we'll, we also have icons for folders and for auxiliary channels in VEP. In the top right, we see, uh, I'm just going to go back to the mixer view here. Uh, in the top right, we see an enable and disable button. This will completely disable or enable uh, the channel, either taking it out of RAM or putting it back in. So by tapping that, we'll see it goes grayed out and it also goes grayed out on VM1's interface. Tapping it again, we'll just bring it right back. 
And then of course, in the bottom right, we can see the color of the channel. Now, let's say I wanted to go back and see something that was on my strings or brass. Well, one thing I can do is I can just, again, swipe back. I can see what else is going on, you know, uh, on my PC. Maybe I want to add a new instance. Let's just add one like that. Okay, great. Uh, but maybe I want to just reference what was on my Mac. So I can, again, swipe back to see all of my servers. I can select my MacBook Pro. Likewise, when looking at instances on a server, I can see the instance ID, a color, whether or not the audio engine is running in the bottom right, and whether or not it's enabled or disabled in the top right. So, And I can disable those if I like. Now, that's a lot of swiping to just get back and forth. So for example, if I'm here on my Mac, another option is I've got this hamburger menu in the top left. And by clicking the menu button, I can see, oh, I've got my, my MacBook Pro, which is loaded. But I can also click on the triangle to see my PC and go straight to my woodwinds, just like that. And also from this menu, if I wanted, I could enable or disable an instance right from here. There we go. But I'll come back to my woodwinds. Maybe I added too many here, so if I want, I can, again, select the edit button, the little wrench, select all, edit, and delete. And so this is really a quick and easy way to interact with all of your channels, whether you're creating a template, editing a template, uh, starting a new project that's maybe not based on a template. This really provides some quick, easy functionality, especially if you're working on multiple servers. Um, for those of you who have three, four, or five servers in one setup, this makes it really easy without going to screen sharing monitors, keyboards, and, and mice, and so on. One last thing I'd like to look at here is if I create a channel and I just go, okay, instruments, VST, Native, contact, great. We'll just create one for now. I can select this channel and I'll get even more information. This is the channel strip view. And you'll see here, I've got a fader, which controls the fader in VE Pro and a pan, which controls the panning. Now, as you can see, there are a few more options available on the channel strip page, but we'll be covering those in a future video. If you have any questions about VM1 and how it works, please let us know in the comments below and we'll make sure to get back to you. Thank you so much for watching and we'll see you next time.